The man who is facilitating the Athletics' temporary stint in Sacramento is the same individual who once told his NBA head coach, hey, why don't you try playing with only four guys on the defensive end of the court? Now, this same character is helping out another sports owner who's so cheap and so incompetent that he doesn't even want to play in a stadium he owns half of. What is happening in Northern California right now? It actually started to make a little more sense to me when King's owner Vivek Ranadive came out with these comments to Casey Pratt. So uh, I've been in touch with the commissioner and I've gotten to know him, uh, the, uh, Rob Manfred. Uh, we can prove that there's a market here and we can make the team successful. Uh, I think uh, we're in pole position to get the new franchise. Dude, come on. Manfred's not even letting you use Sacramento in the team name. The city won't even be in the history books when it's all said and done. The Major League Baseball commissioner may not have said it, but he said it loud and clear. Sacramento isn't in any baseball plans whatsoever. How stupid could you possibly be to believe anything otherwise? Actually, wait, hold on. These comments Ranadive made about Manfred are eerily similar to his nonsensical ramblings about hiring George Carl. But I'm a big George Carl fan, and it's a huge privilege and a huge honor to have him here with us. More on that in a bit. It was widely assumed that A's owner John Fisher was using Sacramento as leverage for his negotiations with Oakland. It turns out the opposite was true. Well, actually, the negotiations were not that intense. Uh, John and I are friends, and so they will be here for three years, and then they have an option on another year. Uh, so uh, it was actually a fairly straightforward deal. Fisher had a live one on the hook, and he was just using Oakland to reel in this mark slowly. That's right. The athletic scumbag owner found perhaps what is sport's biggest mark, and certainly its dumbest owner. There's no other way to put this. There's no other way to spin this. The Oakland A's and John Fisher and Dave Cavill took advantage of Sacramento. And they were allowed to take advantage of Sacramento because of one man, Vivek Ranadive. He was straight up taken advantage of. The response by some folks in Sacramento here is sheer lunacy. People are just trying to justify this using the dustiest of dusty logic. Under no circumstances does this benefit anyone unless Fisher told Ranadive he would be allowed to buy a stake in the A's down the road. And that doesn't mean Sacramento should play any part of this because it doesn't benefit the city like at all. Helping out a team owner, what's in it for the people, the fans of Sacramento? Nothing. However, Ranadive doesn't understand he's getting played by a shark. John Fisher does not value personal relationships, history, tradition, or any of that. He is there to serve himself. Time and again, Fisher has shown himself willing to use people as he sees fit. If they're lucky, they'll get thrown a few thousand bucks their way, as we saw with all of those Nevada politicians down in Carson City when they pushed through the comically ridiculous, unjustifiable, just poor stadium funding bill in Las Vegas. Let's start with something I want to point out about this entire ordeal. If the Oakland A's were moving to Sacramento permanently, I don't think there's as much of an issue here. It's not the best possible outcome, but I think for many folks involved, it would be an acceptable outcome. We've heard many A's fans and many notable A's fans go on record as saying something of the sort. Obviously, the team should stay in Oakland, but if it stays in Northern California, if it's still accessible for all, that would be a workable solution in all of this. Not ideal, but better than nothing. Yet nothing is what we're going to get with the Athletics playing in Sacramento for the next three seasons. They are not staying long term. These efforts will do nothing to get Sacramento a Major League Baseball franchise down the track. It is simply Rana Dive making another terrible decision in a long list of terrible, awful, no good, very bad decisions. There's quite a bit of revisionist history happening in Sacramento about his ownership of the Kings, by the way, because the team is finally good. That somehow a first round playoff loss overrides years, nearly a decade of mismanagement. And it shouldn't. Straight up, based on on-court results, Ranadive is Donald Sterling. Sure, look, the Kings owner isn't as cheap as the disgraced former Clippers owner. He's not a racist sack of crap, but both know how to derail an NBA franchise. 
It took 11 seasons for the Clippers to make the playoffs under Donald Sterling. For the Kings, well, they needed 10 seasons to reach the postseason under Ron Adive. And boy, did the Kings lead man try his damnedest to make sure that was never going to happen. One of Ron Adive's first moves as Sacramento Kings owner was to hire Mike Malone as head coach. This was his guy, the man he wanted to head up the basketball team. Of course, he hired Malone before bringing aboard a general manager, despite literally everyone involved in basketball telling him, hey, that's a really bad decision. Do not do that. It's going to cause problems. Eventually, the Kings did hire Pete D'Alessandro as general manager. The first season they worked together in Sacramento, the team was devoid of talent. There was not a lot anyone could do. It was the first step of a rebuild. Then in that first offseason, apparently George Carl got in contact with Vivek Ranadive and started lobbying him for the head coaching job. That was despite the fact Sacramento already had a head coach in Mike Malone. By the way, this is something Rana Dive admitted to in an interview with KCRA3's Del Rogers. Let's go to the tape. Now, I wanted this to happen a few months ago. Uh, I met him a few months ago, uh, and I was very, very impressed with his uh, commitment to winning, his uh, culture of exceptionalism, his attention to detail. Those, by the way, are just tech buzzwords used to describe faulty products in order to make them seem like legitimate, when in reality, they're crap. Uh, by the way, the interview actually gets worse from here, if that's even possible. But I'm a big George Carl fan, and it's a huge privilege and a huge honor to have him here with us. Rana Dive wanted to fire Malone in the offseason, was talked off that ledge, waited for his head coach to really work his ass off to make a bad roster slightly competitive, and then still went ahead and fired him anyway. The Kings were 11 and 13 with a bad roster, and that wasn't good enough for Rana Dive. If only Malone had done what the owner had asked of him and implemented the cherry picker strategy instead of five guys on defense, I am sure that is a plan that was foolproof and definitely not going to fail. More importantly though, George Carl had burned every last bridge in the NBA at this juncture in time. The only person willing to speak to him was Rana Dive, but worst of all, Carl somehow cajoled the owner based on these conversations into hiring a man that was seen as basically unhirable. Carl's track record since leaving Seattle was not particularly overwhelming. He had numerous clashes with players and management, but worst of all though was the results on the court. Look, Carl could win you regular season games, no doubt about that. However, his teams were a lock to lose in the first round of the playoffs. In 11 of the 13 seasons he advanced to the postseason post-Sonics, his teams lost in the first round. Higher seed, lower seed, home court advantage, nothing mattered. Come playoff time, Carl was guaranteed to get outcoached by anyone he faced in the first round of the playoffs. As bad as that was, Rana Dive really put a cherry on the top of this shit Sunday by making up a laughable lie as to why he fired Malone in the first place. Everyone had known Carl talked his way into this job, but the owner tried to make it out as if Malone and general manager D'Alessandro hated each other and refused to work together, that they just butted heads, oil and water. That of course was proven to not be the case when D'Alessandro left to join the Denver front office on June 10th, 2015. Five days later, they would hire Mike Malone as head coach on June 15th, 2015. If there is one thing people who refuse to work together, people who hate each other do, it's go get jobs together at the same employer a few months later. I mean, just come on. Let's jump ahead on the timeline to Rana Dive's infatuation with Buddy Heald being the next Steph Curry. A thought. A uh, belief that only he and he alone had. In order to acquire Heald, the franchise had to give up its only asset of value basically during the entire 2010s, DeMarcus Cousins. I am not going to say the team wasn't right in exploring trades for Cousins or that they should have held on to him. I'm also not saying we should look through this transaction using a lens of today and the present day with all we know now. That's unfair. At the time, though, when this deal went through, it was clear New Orleans had fleeced Sacramento to get DeMarcus Cousins. 
that happened because Ranadive had to have Buddy Heald. What's worse though is that after Buddy Heald had been acquired by Sacramento, he basically went on record and told the world that Ranadive had tampered with him to get him to the Kings. Just absolutely ridiculous classic Ranadive here. Prior to his career-altering Achilles injury, Cousins was playing inspired basketball for the Pelicans. All NBA level, I mean, honestly, dude kind of looked like a Hall of Famer out there. What Cousins did pre-injury in NOLA was never matched by Buddy Heald at any point during his entire career. But let's put that aside as well as the awkward Tyreek Evans reunion no one wanted and focus on the draft pick the Kings did receive, the first rounder in the 27 NBA draft. That landed at number 10 and the Kings bungled this in the most Kings way possible. They could have stayed at 10 and selected either Donovan Mitchell or Bam Adebayo, most likely the latter given Sacramento had taken De'Aaron Fox with the fifth overall pick in 2017. Instead, Sacramento opted to send the 10th pick to Portland in exchange for the 15th and 20th picks in the draft. So what did they do with these selections? They took Justin Jackson and Harry Giles. It's just, I don't even know what to say as a Kings fan. Like, Utterly ridiculous. Here is who the Kings could have taken instead. John Collins, OG Ananobi, Kyle Kuzman, Derek White, and Josh Hart. Basically, the Kings traded an all-NBA center, albeit one with a temperament problem, to the Pelicans for absolutely nothing, all based on a hunch Rana Dive and Rana Dive alone had about Buddy Heald. Here's the thing, we could get lost in the weeds with King's draft picks under Ronadive and the people he have hired. I don't really want to do that because it would take forever. Like, we would be here for hours going over the just sheer lunacy, the sheer ridiculousness, the sheer preposterousness of the Sacramento Kings NBA drafts of the 2010s. Just know it takes a special level of rudderless leadership to whip as many times as Sacramento has under the ownership of Vivek Ronadive. Of course, there's a litany of other stupid moves to happen under Rana Dive's watch that we haven't even talked about. Luke Walton, his daughter is G League GM, four on five basketball, practicing free throws during the game, and the overall cultivation of a toxic work environment. Those in Sacramento looking for a silver lining or looking for the positive say something along the lines of, well, he hired Mike Brown and Monty McNair, so maybe he's finally getting it right. And to that, I counter with, the dude has hired and fired so many people in his short time in Sacramento, a good one, a competent one, is bound to slip in every now and again. All of this brings us back to Sacramento and its hosting of the Oakland Athletics, a classic bout of Vivek Rana Dive donkey brainedness, if there ever was one. As just about everyone else has mentioned on several occasions, there is no reason to believe that Rana Dive or Sacramento will get a whiff of an MLB franchise regardless of what happens in Las Vegas. You would have to be an absolute grade A moron to believe Otherwise, uh, I guess if the shoe fits, wear it. How many times over the years have we seen Rana Dive do something everyone said was a bad move? How many times has that move then blown up in his face? Far too many to count in Sacramento. As we saw with George Carlin, NBA pariah, no one wanted anything to do with. John Fisher is now working with Vivek Ranadive because he's the only person dumb enough, the only person gullible enough to help him out. The King's owner is a mark. He's the dumbest person in sports. A man who can be so easily manipulated as long as he thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. Fisher basically said, oh, well, I might go back to Oakland if you don't give me what I want, Vivek. And what do you know, Rana Dive caved in, bent over backwards for a man who literally didn't have a leg to stand on in these negotiations. I can only assume this deal was consummated by Fisher giving Rana Dive half of one of those BFF heart necklaces and saying, you know, best friends forever, huh? Hey, I'm sure those Major League Baseball players are going to be delighted for all of those 1230 games in July on getaway days where they're just roasting in the Sacramento heat of 100 plus. And hey, Rana Dive's daughter is going to develop into a basketball lifer. And who needs Giannis Antetokounmpo when you have Ben McLemore and 80 gigs of data? 
sure, maybe the Athletics stay in Sacramento long term. And maybe Buddy Heald's the next Steph Curry. Oh, wait, never mind. Vivek Ranadive is the dumbest owner in sports, and he just got taken advantage of by the worst owner in sports. A partnership, a match made in sporting heaven. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to know a little bit more about why I believe Sacramento is actually a Major League Baseball ready city, just not for the A's in this fashion, well, the video in the upper right-hand corner of your screen is the place to go. Until next time, I am Cheyenne Hollis. This is the Touchback, and as we say around here, hashtag take it up to the 25. But more importantly, before I finish that, hashtag sell a team and hashtag sell the Kings.